still answer questions. All right, are you guys with me on that? All right, so with this one, guys, we're taking what we did with line segments and we're now switching it to angles. Now, all of you know, if I asked you to draw an angle, could draw me an angle, couldn't you? But could you probably give me a formal definition for it, though? No. So let's go ahead and let's get our definition down, what an angle is. And so here's really what we're trying to do today. We're trying to name and classify angles and find their measures. That's all we're trying to do. Nothing earth-shattering, like, difficult, but we just have to know the right terms. So what is an angle? Well, an angle is a figure formed by two rays that share a common endpoint. So looking at this diagram over here, that common endpoint is going to be called, is point R, but it has a specific name, okay? That endpoint which is uh, the endpoint, which is called, I should say which is, I'm trying to think of my correct grammar here, which is called a vertex. And again, that's term that you had before. So this would be your vertex. Now, some simple things that might sound like really silly, but we all know. Well, what do we call those two rays when they make an angle? Those become the sides of the angle, right? So ray RS is a side, ray RT is a side. So simple things like that. Um, by the way, the plural for vertex is vertices. So just think plural, because we use that a lot in this class, for vertex is vertices. So that's a sidebar, just grammatical things and stuff later. But when you look at this, you've all had angles before. But here's the thing. There's a lot of different ways of naming angles, and we have to use correct notation. Now, do you remember when we talked about a line and a line segment? When we name a line, we use a line symbol, correct? When we name a line segment, we use a, a line segment. So what do you think we're going to use when we name an angle? An angle, I know. Isn't this just like math teachers aren't original? But when you work with it, you're going to use an angle symbol. Now, I have to warn you, I have sloppy handwriting. I've looked at some of yours. You guys do too, all right? Now, try to make it so it doesn't look like an L, okay? So you need to slant it a little bit. Um, when you do that, you just it just reads angle. When you name an, an angle, one of the ways that you can guarantee naming it right is if you use three points to do it, okay? You, you basically play connect the points, all right? So when I name an angle, you can name it, but the vertex, by the way, always has to be in the middle. You're gonna name it angle S, R, T. Why do I use three? Well, it's kind of like in geometry, we play connect the points. I start at S, I go to R, I end where? Ooh, I just made an angle. Now, what if I wanted to start at T first? Okay, that's fine. You just go angle T, R, S. Not bad, right? So if in doubt, use how many points? Three. It just helps you be very specific and you're just playing connect the points. Now. If it's a simple angle just like this one right here, and there is no other angle drawn, you can name it strictly by its vertex. That's also known as angle R. Now, I want everyone to look at that. Did you see a single lowercase letter in there? Please don't be that person who did that, okay? Most of you did great. I think there was like two people I got after for using the wrong cases of letters when it came to line segments and stuff. So you guys are doing pretty good. Make sure it's capital letters. Now, what if I, I have tons of ang angles being drawn off there? I don't want to name it angle R because angle R is the vertex for all of those angles. Well, then we put a single number in there without a degree symbol, okay? And so that could also be called angle one. So that one angle has how many different ways of naming it? Four. Now, not all ways are always going to be present when you're looking at a diagram. So you use the one that's the most convenient and the one that's most specific that you can use. Now, there's a few other things you just need to know. Do you see up here? Now, you can't see it on your... Um, a printed copy of the notes, but up here you see the kind of the tan area right there? Anything in between the sides of your angle, that's going to be called the interior. So you have your interior portion. So we have interior of angles. Go figure. And then anything that we'd say in the blue, that kind of in the blue hue right there, all those points out there that are blue, those are called the exterior. And why do we do that? Just so we can describe stuff better. That's all we're doing. 
All right, now, if I give you something in bold face and underlined, do you think it's slightly something you should know? All right, let's read it together then. You cannot name an angle just by its vertex if the point is in the vertex of more than one angle. In this case, you must use all three points to name the angle, and the middle point is always the vertex. Sort of kind of like this diagram right here. Looking at this, it says, what are the possible angles in the given diagram? I cannot say angle A, because you can look at it and go, well, which one, right? So I need to be specific as I possibly can. So looking at this, we have to use three points to name it. Now, for instance, let's just have fun naming these, okay? Do you guys agree with me that we could start and we can go angle B, A, C? What do you guys think? Does that work? Could I also have angle B, A, D? Oh, that just makes me smile. All right, angle bad. So I went angle B, A, C, then I went angle B, A, D. Could I also have angle B, A, E, which is the big one, right? Is it a different angle if I said angle E, A, B? It's the same name, right? So be careful not to write a name more than once just because you go in a different order. All right, now let's try another one. What if I started with angle C, A, E? Now, what if I go angle C, A, D? Is that one? So I go from C, A to D, right? What would be another one that I could do that's not a repeat? Yep, angle C, A, E. Awesome. So far, we already have five different angles from this diagram. All right, how about angle DAE? Can I do any other new angles from the ones that we named? Can I say the number one error you guys will do tonight on homework? Number one error that I've noticed over, some will go like, there's more than six. See, Mrs. Gregerson, I have EAD and I have angle DAC. There's more. Is it, are they really more? No, just a different name for the same thing. So be careful not to like, I call it double name something, okay, or triple name something. But always, what's the one thing in common for every single one of these? A is always in the middle of the vertex, so don't forget some simple stuff like that. All right, a few reviews. Right, guys, how do we measure angles? We use degrees, and someone goes, a uh, protractor. Yes, that is correct. We use protractors that are based off of, and I have, a wood one over there and I have an orange one over there, plastic. Um, when you measure with using protractors, I'm okay, I'm making a big assumption that you've at least touched a protractor once or twice in your life before. All right. So understanding that they measure in degrees and how you do that is basically I'm expecting you to know how to do. All right. Now, with this, really, where did that all come from? It actually comes from a circle. Because when you look at an angle, when you use a protractor, you're taking a semicircle and you're figuring out how many degrees it is. And we always put our angles vertex on the center of the circle. That's where we get the measurement from. How many degrees is in a circle? 360. So a degree is literally just one 360th of a circle is basically what you're doing. Now, there is some notation you need to know for this. All right, remember notation for a line segment. There is a difference between naming a segment and its length, right? You guys did better than probably I've had in like three years of people using correct notation. So keep it up. Now, there's a difference here. If I'm talking about the degrees of an angle, you put an M in front of it. So like if I talked about the measure of angle A, let's say, you would have a lowercase m, and it literally reads measure of angle A. And you'd have something like 45 degrees. Does that make sense? So put a lowercase m in front. So again, do not do this. You would get it wrong because you forgot to put what in front? I'm going to tell you right now, in two years, your teachers will probably drop the M in front. They just do. It's just bad notation on their part, but just know you're not going to do it in geometry class, and that's one of our key notations of the whole year. So just put the M in front. All right. Now, remember something that we had before. 
We had the ruler postulate. Remember the ruler postulate says that we can make a number line so we can measure things? Guess what a protractor postulate tells you? Yep, we can put a protractor together and you can measure angles. Notice it. Uh, yep, that's all we're spending time on that one. You can see how, yay, moving on. All right, now let's talk about how to use a protractor though. All right, when you had a protractor, and this is on your paper as well, I don't want degrees to be negative. Not until you're in pre-calculus world, okay? So when I work at it, I'm looking for a positive degree measure of an angle. Now, could I have cases where I have an angle like angle COD where it's in the middle of my protractor? And the answer is yes. However, when you were a kid, you would literally twist that protractor so it wouldn't be in the middle. And you are totally correct to do so, all right? But th this is actually works exactly the same way as our number line would do. I just look to see where their measurements are and I take their difference of it. And I always want it to be positive. So I'm working with this one right here, like the measure of angle DOC. Um, you have to decide, first of all, are, am I using the top of the protractor or the lower measurements of the protractor? It's up to you guys to decide. But when you're doing that, it's kind of, I don't know, however you want to do it, basically. So let's just do this first one here. What if I use the blue side first and I used up here? Isn't that 65 degrees? All right, so I could have 65 degrees here. But if I used up here, I have to use up here as well. And isn't that 135 degrees? So I'm looking from here to here. Well, isn't that just 70 degrees? So I know that's 70 degrees. But what if you didn't like measuring it there? Well, then don't. Could I use this one right here instead and go from here to here? Yeah, I could go 45 degrees. And could I go to 115 degrees? Guess what I still got for a measurement? Do you think it matters to me which one's which? As long as you can measure it and figure it out, I'm pretty happy with it. All right, so let's do this one real quick. And by the way, if you can just measure it, you don't have to show the map beyond it. It makes it so much easier. Like, what's the measure of angle BOD? Aren't we just going to go like this and follow this one to here? What do you guys think? Actually, I'm going to follow it to here. So I don't have to do any difference with it? How many degrees is that? Yeah, so you got 65 degrees. What's the measure of angle DOA? Let's go DOA. So if I'm going DOA, this is this big angle. Can't I literally go, hmm. <coughs> to me, it, it makes more sense to go like this. Don't you guys go like from here to here? And did you guys get 115 degrees? This is when I like protractors. They make life easy. All right, how about the measure of angle DOC? Oh, wait, we already did that. Okay, anyway, 70 degrees. If you have to show work, do what? Show work. But notice the notation with that, we have an M in front. See, this is why today is so easy, so fun. Life is wonderful. Okay, if you didn't know this, I would cry that your elementary school teachers let me down. Okay, if you didn't know these things, like, seriously. I would cry if you're elementary teachers. I think you start learning this in second grade. So if you don't know this, I'm sorry. Okay, you'll have to learn it now. But do you remember the cheesiness they'd say acute angles are because they're also small and acute? Okay, could we just memorize what it really means? Okay, it says this is an angle whose measure is less than 90 degrees. So just think smaller than 90. Nothing really great about it that you can explain. We just know it's less than 90 degrees. And then remember, we had our right angles. They're always equal to how many degrees? Their measure is equal to 90. And we use the little box to represent that. Get really used to drawing in that little box in the corner. Okay? That's the 90 degree mark. And it lets us assume so much information if we have that. We use angles all the time in this class. All right, do you remember obtuse? Remember your teacher would joke and say, it's because they're so wide and big, you know, or they're because they're so obese. You know, that type of scenario, it was all sad. But just remember this one, all right? That an obtuse angle is just an angle whose measure is greater than 180, oh, excuse me, greater than 90 degrees. I said 180, wow, that would have been a large angle. All right, greater than 90 degrees. Simple as that. Make sure it's big. And this one, I think, is the dumbest angle in the whole wide world. A straight angle. Well, a straight angle measures what? It's really just a what? 
Let's just call it that. Oh, it drives me crazy. Because we know it's 180 degrees. So from here to here, 180 degrees. From here to here, 180 degrees. Woo! Okay. And remember, think about what the definition of an angle was, though. It's just two rays with a common endpoint. What are opposite rays? Two rays with a common end point that go in opposite directions. They made lines, too. So I don't know why they just said line. All good. But they're going to, no terminology, you're going to hear the word straight angle every once in a while. So make sure we know that. All right, moving on. See, those are easy ones. We have what are called congruent angles. Well, we had congruent line segments. If I give you congruent line segments, what would you guys give me? Think about it for a moment. Because remember, I said if I give you a midpoint, you give me two what? Congruent segments. Now think about it. If I give you congruent line segments, you give me congruent what? Think of congruent segments, you give me congruent. If I give you congruent line segments, you give me segments of the same length, right? But if I give you congruent angles, you're going to give me angles that have the same length. Thank you. You see how it works? You need to make sure you can correlate with that. So this one right here. Congruent angles are angles with the same degree measure. So, and remember, that just means same shape and same what, guys? Now, congruency symbols, if we remember correctly when you're this. We know if the measure of angle ABC is equal in, oops, there should be an M here, sorry, a typo there. The measure of angle DEF, then we know angle ABC is congruent to angle DEF. I'm so sorry about that. I totally had a typo there. Oh, well, you guys will get used to it, Mark. I'm the typo queen, so you'll get used to finding them. Now, congruency means the same length. So this literally reads right here. Angle ABC is congruent to angle DEF. Nothing earth shattering, but if I want to talk about measures, I go the measure of angle ABC is equal to the measure of angle DEF. They're interchangeable. Arc marks, we use these arc marks are like tick marks. Same number of arc marks, they're the same size. So you can have time. You can even change it up if you don't like those like that. You can go an arc mark with a tick mark. You know, you look really cool then. So just something that shows me that they're going to be congruent to each other. So if you have it, you need to mark it down. Are you guys ready to try? One more thing. We're almost there. So, and then we can just work problems, which makes life fun. Segment addition postulate. Okay, this is way back from Friday. So segment addition postulate has a sister postulate called the angle addition postulate. In general terms, they both imply the same thing. All right, what general terms did we use for the segment addition postulate? We'd say what? Sum of? Someone was not reviewing their notes this weekend, I see, which is a majority of you. Oh, boy, I'm worried about sum of the parts equal the whole. Guys, honestly, that's all you need to know. The sum of the parts equal the whole. The exact same thing happens with angle. Now, you have to make sure you don't overlap parts, okay? No overlapping parts with either line segments or angles. But the angle addition pasha is exactly the same way. If I ask you for either... You need to know some of the parts equal the whole. But let's write the formal angle addition postulate down first. If point S is in the interior of angle RQP, then we know the measure of angle RQS plus the measure of angle S. QP equals the measure of angle RQP. So basically we're saying these two smaller ones add up to the big one, which makes sense, right? Nothing really different than before. Guess what's going to be the key with these? Mark up your diagrams. Redraw, it doesn't take that long, and mark up your diagrams. So right here on this first one it says find the measure of angle X. WZ, excuse me, the measure of angle XWZ from here to here is 121 degrees. The measure of angle XWY, remember XWY, that's 59 degrees from here to here. 
I want to know the measure of angle YWZ. Guys, how would I find it? A little bit louder. What? Subtract. subtract. I'm just going to go 120 minus 59. I'm going to take the part and subtract the whole and subtract one of the parts, right? And so what should you get with that one? Yeah, 62 degrees. So we know the measure of angle YWZ is 62 degrees. Isn't that really just what we did with line segments a little bit? Yeah, that's the cool part. It's the same type of idea. I call them sister theorems or sister ideas because it's tweaked slightly because you're working with angles instead of line segments, but doesn't the same thing hold true? Yes, Gloria Grace. Um, for our quiz, should I just write some of the parts equal the whole? It matters what I ask. If I ask what's a general idea, yep, or what phrase could you use to describe the postulate, that totally works. All right, next problem here. It says the measure of angle WYZ is 2X minus 5 degrees. The measure of angle XYW is 3X plus 10 degrees. Find the value of X. All right, well, let's look at this. So we have WYZ is 2X minus 5 degrees, and we know XYW is 3X plus 10 degrees. And I want to find the value of X. Any suggestions? Perfect. Because, guys, even though I don't like the straight angle idea, but isn't that really what we're going to be using? The fact that we know if I have a straight line, I can still make it into two smaller angles, but those two smaller angles have to add up to what? 180. So that's exactly what we're going to go. We're going to go 3x plus 10 plus 2x minus 5 is equal to 180 degrees. Really, this is the idea behind it. Measure of angle WYZ plus the measure of angle XYW equals the measure of angle XYZ. And so we just do the math now. You, I only need to see this part. Does that make sense? I don't need to see what angles added together. I just need to see your algebra. So I get 5X plus 5 is equal to 180. 5X equals to 175. Do we get X is equal to 35? Could I use that to solve for my missing two angles? Yeah, easily. Don't be afraid. Make sure you follow all the way through and plug it in. All right, last but not least, an angle bisector. So guess what I'm going to do to my angle? Cut it in half. Exactly. So an angle bisector is a ray in the interior. of the angle that divides an angle into two congruent angles. Now, if you wanted to abbreviate that, you could put the two sign, congruency symbol, and then an angle symbol. Simple as that. Um, here's the other thing about messy handwriting with angles before I forget. If you ever see this, that's just an angle with an arc mark through it. That's supposed to let you know that's not supposed to be a sloppy L or something like that. That still means angle symbol. So you'll see angle symbols with arcs through it without. Um, I put them in when I'm really sloppy and I'm like, ooh, they don't know if that's an L or not. I'll throw the arc symbol in instead. Um, that type of thing. So just know that's different notation that you'd see. So let's think about this for a moment. Look at the notation. It says, if segment JK, and if we can even change that if we want to, let's change it to a ray. If ray JK bisects angle LJM, then what do I know? Well, then I know that angle LJK is congruent to angle, we can go KJM or anything like that. So basically, if you get an angle bisector, you better have two congruent angles. All right, let's try it real quick. If I give you an angle bisector, then you give me two congruent angles. Does that make sense? Okay, quick review. If I give you a midpoint, then you give me line segments. Very good. Good job. Good save. People normally get thrown off. If I give you a segment bisector, then you give me 
Two congruent lines, same as right. If I give you an angle bisector, everyone can get a little more enthusiastic. Come on, it's Monday, a little more enthusiastic. If I give you an angle bisector, then you give me two, two congruent, congruent angles. See, your life is perfect now because look what you're going to do for the very next one. Draw it and mark it, people. Because it says Ray KM bisects JKL. So that means I have to draw my angle. Here's J K L. M bisects it, Ray K M. So I have my two congruent angles. I mark it right away. I haven't even gotten to the rest of my given information. I don't even know what I'm looking for yet in my problem, but I have it all marked up. Then I put in the rest of my given info after that. It says the measure of angle J K M is equal to 4x plus 6 degrees, and the measure of angle MKL is 7x minus 12 degrees. Find the measure of angle JKM. So I'm looking for this angle right here. I want to know its measurement. Suggestions, anyone? Claudia, you have an idea? That's right. Yeah, I need to find out what x is so I can substitute in. So how am I going to find out what for x is? What am I going to do next? Ali, you had your hand up, right? Oh, yeah. Nope, you were just thinking? All right. SJ. Uh, yeah, if I give you an angle bisector and I have two congruent angles, aren't they equal in measure? So can't I say then that 4x plus 6 is equal to 7x minus 12? And then I can solve for x. So I'm going to move the 4x over so I get 3x minus 12. I got x is equal to 6. But are we done with the problem? No, we got to finish the problem because it says find the measure of angle JKM. So the measure of angle JKM is going to be 4 times 6 plus 6. I got 30 degrees. Is that what you guys got? Okay, what's the measure of angle MKL, even though that's not asked for? What's the measure of angle JKL? Yeah, one's 30, the other one's 60. Yeah, if you know one, you should know the rest. All right, let's look at the next one. Let's see how much. Oh, we actually might get done. This is a good thing. All right, should we draw a diagram again if there's not a diagram? Yes. If there is a diagram, should you mark up your diagram? Yes. So this one we said ray BX bisects angle ABC. So we're going to put our ABC here. If I give you an angle bisector, you guys give me what? Two congruent Very good. Two congruent angles. So what did I mark? Two congruent angles. Then it says solve for x, the measure of angle ABC. If the measure of angle ABC, so we got the large angle this time. This is 4x minus 12. And the measure of angle ABX is 24 degrees. I want to solve for x and the measure of angle ABC. Now, did anyone think that it's almost easier to find the measure of angle ABC first? Because what would I have to do to find the measure of angle ABC? Yeah! The measure of angle ABC, I know both of those are 24. So I know it's just 2 times 24, which is going to be 48 degrees. I mean, hello, sometimes it's supposed to be that nice. However, I want to find x as well. But can I use the fact that those two still are both 24 to help me out? Can I use the fact that the whole, which is going to be 4x minus 12, is still equal to the sum of the parts? Now, the only reason why I did that is to emphasize there's two angles there, right? Otherwise, could you put just 48 down and be just as good? Yeah, I can figure that out. So we get 4x minus 12 is equal to 48 degrees. We get 4x is equal to 60. x is going to equal 15. So those are our two different answers. Now, the key with all these, if you give yourself the visual, you notice you can normally get it faster. Take the time to give yourself the visual. You guys will get it. All right, your homework assignment is on the calendar. I think I also have it on the whiteboard over here. It's just doing the same thing that you did with line segments, except for you're just changing to a different figure of doing it with angles. It would be a really wise student to start studying for your quiz on block, because this is the last section that's on that quiz, and you have lots of definitions in pod quiz you have to have memorized.
So I'd make sure I'd start working on that and come in for any help that you have. Any questions for me, scholar? Yes, sir. Uh, if the arc of the two congruent angles aren't at the same height, does that mean that they're not congruent? No, it's just the fact that if you put them right where they're exactly the same, it looks like one whole thing, so it doesn't help. So you just normally you just offset one a little bit. Wow. So, so no. Really no, 